we shared Phil uh, with the Cedar Springs Church of Nazarene. Uh, he led worship there, uh, right there, west of Fairview. And uh, so I told him whenever he came today that I was going to pick out songs that he was going to have to sing. So we're going to have to work it over time again. Uh, that's what we did. Um, I, this last week, uh, we, the teenagers uh, was involved in a thing called See You at the Pole. Um, I am the treasurer of the Minister Alliance, so that means that I just write checks uh, to wherever they want me to, to, to write checks to. Well, every single year around that time, the Minister Alliance provides donuts for uh, the, the, the teenagers that meet at uh, the middle school and the high school, and so we had to order like eight dozen donuts, so it was my responsibility the night before to let the donut shop know that this many donuts was to be provided the night before. Well, it was Tuesday, um, and my son's birthday uh, turned to, and we, uh, we ended up going to the state fair that morning, and Eason uh, ate corn on the cob, you know, things that he eats and stuff like that, and he ended up getting sick. Um, and I was just saying, you know, that's what the state fair is good for, is just to get sick on food. But you wouldn't think the corn on the cob would make you sick. Well, anyway, we just kind of had an eventful day that day. And uh, it got to be that afternoon. And something on my phone went, ding. And so I'm just thinking, what could that possibly be? I know that's my calendar. And I look at it, and it was a reminder to order donuts. So the ding in my mind went, boom. Oh my goodness, the donut shop closes like at 12 or 1 o'clock or something like that. Here it is at 5.30. What am I going to do? You know, so I'm just, I'm looking on Google and I'm trying to find the phone number to it. Just hoping that maybe somebody, maybe they forward their, their calls to their house or maybe they've got a voicemail or something like that whenever they go in that they would know. So uh, I called and, and uh, lo and behold, they had a voicemail. And so I, I told them that kind of the scenario, say it's 5.30 in the afternoon, I'm very apologetic, but could you please make a few extra donuts for the sea at the pole type of thing? And, and uh, what ended up happening is that they had extra donuts for us. And, and so well, with that little reminder on my phone that goes ding, that ended up Re using as a reminder for me to order donuts was a little bit too late for me, but uh, it ended up being the where we got the donuts ordered and and uh, uh, did you guys get donuts that day? Good, good. So um, you're welcome. <laughs> um, uh, but I, you know, that's the kind of the thing about reminders is that, is that sometimes you know the mind plays funny things. You know, Carrie and I kind of have conversations and we, we laugh about this because every time that, you know, we're working at the same time in the, in the church together, Carrie, Carrie sometimes walks from the kitchen or wherever place and he comes into the office and he's like, I forgot what I was going to say, you know, and, and goes and does what he's going to do. And, and I do the same thing to him. We kind of joke with each other. Maybe we need to start uh, carrying around recorders, you know, in, in the, you know, if, say, whenever you start to walk to somebody's office or to wherever they're working, you need to put on there on your recorder. I am going to talk to Carrie about this and then start that way, you know. Minds, I mean, you. I don't know what point in your life, in my life, actually I remember the point in my life in which that I had so much going on that I had to carry a pocket calendar. Yes, a pocket calendar, not a digital one, one of these ones that are pocket that you write in. You know, I didn't have a, a fancy phone. That should tell you, you know, how young that I was, where my mind started slipping a little bit. But you know, um, diseases of the mind can be tragic. Many of you probably have experienced your, yourself, maybe with a parent, maybe with a grandparent, maybe about something, but things like dementia, things like Alzheimer's, Things of that nature that affect the mind can be very detrimental, very tragic. You know, you have maybe have walked alongside of a best friend where the formative years of your life, you've walked alongside of those people and all of a sudden they don't even recognize who you are. 
And it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to see a friend that doesn't know who you are, especially whenever they've been so instrumental in your form, formative years. You've walked along husbands. You've walked alongside wives. And, you know, it's just, it's just so difficult. Did you know that osteo, uh, osteosclerosis? What's that? It's the narrowing of the veins, right? Osteosclerosis, Wendy. Come on. It helps to have nurses in the sanctuary whenever you're helping the sermon out. Come on. Did you know, I, I googled this, I just can't pronounce it, okay? Osteosclerosis, it's supposedly the narrowing of the veins. Do you know that that can have effect on your mental state as well? The blood flow is not getting enough blood to your brain and, and sometimes that can cause, there's a lot of diseases out there. But if you, you know who you are, if you're dealing with aging parents, grandparents, and, and friends um, that are dealing with some type of disease or, or state that is, uh, that is detrimental to their memory. Can we just take a moment and pray uh, for those? Um, just going to spend just a moment to where that you are praying. I don't know who comes to your mind. Um, I know that there's a lot of us out here that, uh, that walk alongside uh, of people that are dealing with that. Let's pray for those people, would we? Lord, uh, we are a community of faith and, and we, we suffer alongside with those that suffer with their families and their friends, Lord. And for those that, uh, that have lost loved ones due to those types of things, Lord, I pray uh, in your redeeming qualities that you redeem the, the time that is lost. God, I just ask that, uh, that for healing to happen, Lord, and uh, holistic healing to happen, uh, and uh, for your church to respond in the appropriate manner. And we just give you the glory that's due your name. Amen. The story that we're going to be reading today is found in, in Judges chapter 3. Um, it, it'll take me a while to get there because there's some stuff that I want to share with you about what has gone on in Judges chapter 3 that I think that is appropriate for us to set the stage for what happens in Judges chapter 3. Um, it's, it's almost the exact same thing that we talked about. There is, was a tragic memory loss that had happened in this particular thing. Tragic corporate memory loss. It wasn't just one particular person that was dealing with dementia, that was dealing with, with um, Alzheimer's or any type of memory loss. It was a complete generation that had forgotten completely, which is exactly what happens to the nations of Israel in Judges chapter 3. And it's an interesting time during the life of the people of Israel. Okay? So, I don't need to, I'm, I don't mean to insult your biblical knowledge, uh, so won't, won't you just help me out with this? Okay, so the nation of Israel was in bondage in Egypt for how many years? 400 years. Yes, they were in 400 years, and then what happened was that... Um, they were in bondage for 400 years and they cried out to God for, for God to deliver them. So what God do? He raised up a redeemer through the name of, of Moses and Aaron. And, and he delivered them and they went out into the desert. And they were in the desert for how long? 40 years, yes. They were, they were wandering around the desert for 40 years. And what ends up happening is that they start being, because of their disobedience, that that generation died off before that they went into the land of Canaan. And so, um, so they were just wandering around the desert. They cried out to God, and God raises up another leader by the name of... Joshua, yes, Joshua, and Joshua fights the battle, and, uh, and they, they take, uh, and, and the Lord is victorious, and they take the land of Canaan in which that they, were, that they belong to, so you guys did really good at this quizzing uh, today, so appreciate you guys' uh, participation. But here's what, what happens whenever we get to Judges chapter 3. You see the grandparents and the parents of those people uh, that had taken that land, um, now have died off. Those people that had to fight for the land, those people that had to discern God's voice and listen and obey, those people have died off whenever we get to Judges chapter 3. So what ends up happening is now we've got a generation of, of, of kids, now adults, 
that have never been battle tested before. They've never had to discern for themselves. They never had to go through what their grandparents had gone through. They were just living off the coattails of the blessings of what their grandparents and parents have gone through. They never had to fight for the land themselves. They never had to pray and cry out to God in the midst of the, their distress. They never had to discern and listen to the voice of God. They never really had to be obedient because they just were on the coattails of their grandparents' and parents' faith. So God knows that if this generation is going to be raised up to obey him, they're going to have to be battle tested as well. They're going to have to be in situations to where they are going to have to learn to seek God, learn to hear his voice. You see, there were still voices running through the land of Canaan. There were still voices that surrounded that land that this generation still needed to conquer. And it says in Judges chapter 3 that God did, did that to this generation in order to put them to the test. Not a test on them or whether or not that they would learn how to fight, but whether or not that they would learn to listen. And the sad part is, was a test in which this generation failed, and they failed miserably. When given the opportunity to listen to the, God, the voice of God, it says in Judges chapter 3, verse 7, they had forgot about God. What does verse 7 say in, in Judges chapter 3? They forgot about God. So here they are, this generation enjoying the land in which that their parents and grandparents sacrificed for and fought for. Which reminds me, how many in here were raised in church? Wow, uh, quite a bit of you. Um, you know that uh, there is a difference between being raised in church and having godly parents. Does anybody know that? Um, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus or anything like that here today. But I was blessed to have godly parents, great examples, uh, godly grandparents, um, I'm not just saying that because they're here in the audience tonight, or today, this morning. Um, but uh, I, I did grow up. Not that our families didn't have struggles, not that our family did not uh, have to go through the fire and the flames and, and some hiccups or anything like that. Um, but I, I did have great examples. And, and just so that you know that, that there is a difference. Just because that you were raised in church doesn't necessarily guarantee that your children will be raised in church. Because you have to set an example. You have to set an example. Even though that I had great grandparents, great parents, myself, there came a time in my life that I would have had to make the decision for myself. Uh, I'm kind of coming out of my adolescence stage still. Um, what they're telling me now is that, that adolescence is being uh, uh, prolonged. Look at Tyler. Um, <laughs> adolescence is being prolonged, you know, in our lives. And, and, uh, but uh, there has to become a moment in time where we're all battle tested. You know, we've got kids of our own now. Uh, we've got responsibilities and jobs of our own. And it doesn't mean that we can con continue to um, depend upon the prayers of our grandparents, depend upon the, the prayers of our parents. There has to be a time and a day where you have to draw a line in the sand for yourself and say, this is my house. And this is what I am going to serve. This is who I am going to serve. And I hope the, the who is going to be the him. I'm going to serve Yahweh. It's going to be his way. The one true God. There had to be a day in which that I had to tune in to know and discern the direction of God's voice in my life. I couldn't listen and stay on the coattails of my parents and my grandparents. And that's the same thing that's going on. The, the description of me is the generation of Israel here in the chapter, chapter 3 of Judges. 
They were at a critical point in which that they had to decide for themselves to follow what God says. And Judges 3, 7 said they didn't do it very well because they had forgotten about God. And that has consequences. It has consequences for them, and it has consequences for us. Forgetting about God always has consequences. That's what it is. Forgetting about God. Forgetting about God has consequences. So here's what it looked like for them. By the way, that even though that we forget about God, he never, ever forgets about us. Thank you for that amen, because I truly believe that, and I hope that you truly believe that as well. Even though that we forget about God, God never, ever forgets about us. And this is why you have the recycle emblem in the eye on uh, your bulletins and on the screen, is because that you'll see this, this vicious cycle throughout Scripture, and then, you know, sometimes we see this cycle happen in our life as well, where we see this. Um, this is what happens, that God... God used his instrument of grace. And that's what I believe that it, that it is. God uses his instrument of grace whenever his people forget about him. To be used as a ding, a reminder that is supposed to be used as a boom. Wake up! Did you forget about something? <laughs> this is what happens. His people decide, maybe it's a slow fade, where they end up forgetting about God. And they're in a bad way. And what ends up happening is that they end up crying out to God. And what does God do? He responds. He raises up a leader. He raises up a leader, and they continue to cry out to God. He, they raise up a leader, and, they are, and God is victorious. And they are redeemed, and they are restored, and for a time being, that they worship the God that is victorious in their life. Some years pass, 15, maybe 40, maybe 100 years, and they begin to forget about the one that delivers them, and they find themselves in a bad way. And God uses that instrument of grace to offer a ding. Reminder, you remember? Remember who I am, I am your deliverer. You forgot about me. So they cry out to him and God raises up another leader. Do you guys see the cycle that happens there? And that's what happens all the way through the Old Testament. You see that happening in the New Testament. You see that happening in our lives as well. And they go through that whole cycle. And you see it throughout that. And God wants to give them a ding that feels like a boom. And he wants their attention. In Judges chapter 3, that ding happens in the form of a king, the king of Aram. The king of Aram, he is an enemy, he brings his enemy army and he surrounds them and he, he kicks booty, he takes names, and he conquers them. And that's what happens. And now they're living in oppression underneath this king of Aram. Now I would think if I saw an enemy coming, if they were surrounding me, for me, I would think, well, I haven't prayed in a while. <laughs> um, maybe I should start doing that now. God, I hadn't talked to you in a while, but I'm in a bad way. I need you to help me out. But that's not what happened to the nation of Israel. King Aram's army has surrounded them, and they were taken over. God was never mentioned. God never was cried out to. So here's what happens. They get into the land that God has for them. And the first thing that they do after that they've been taken over, they start to get permissive. And that permissiveness becomes participation. What ends up happening is that um, they've got these other enemy camps, uh, these enemy nations that have surrounded them. They are the voices that have surrounded them. And they've, they serve these other gods. It is not okay in God's eyes. Never the circumstance, whatever the circumstance is, it is never, ever okay in God's eyes to worship someone else, some other god. It's cut and dry. 
whenever it comes to God in that matter. It's black and white. So what ends up happening is that, you know, if I'm a part of the nation of Israel, I've got this son here, and he, he likes this Hivite lady, uh, or Parasite lady, or whatever ite that is there, and, and I said, you know, I don't see anything wrong with it. Go ahead, take her as your wife. And they start intermingling, and not, not, that, not that my son comes and, and takes his God with him, because they had forgotten about him. He starts bowing down to another god, lowercase g. And that's kind of what happens, you know, sons and daughters start inter intermingling, you know, they go to the same school now, you know, they start getting uh, permissive and they start intermingling and they're like, yeah, let's, everything's okay, everything's all right, bring in your gods, you know, we're good, we're buddies now, you know, we're going to save our own necks no matter what, so, you know, let's, let's bring in your gods and we'll bow down to them as well. So they started, it started with being permissive, then it turned into being participation. So the enemy had become one of them, and so they became one of the same, and the Israelites bowed down to other gods, and they forgot the one true God. And it doesn't matter if it's Israel in Judges chapter 3, or the Watonga Church of the Nazarene in 2015, whenever you forget about God, bad stuff can happen. Whenever you forget about God, bad stuff can happen. So this is what happens to them. Eight years of living under the rule of the enemy, enemy army. Eight years of idolatry. Eight years of wasted time. Eight years in which they couldn't recapture. Eight year, years until that they were ready to cry out to God. Now you might think, okay, eight years. If you look at Genesis chapter 1 to the end, that's a, lot, that's a little bitty speck on the big time frame. But I mean, if we think about this in human years, think about eight years of your life. Wasted time. Eight years. What could you have done in eight years? What have you done in the last eight years? If we look around, a lot has changed in our life in the last eight years. In the great scheme of things, you might think it might not matter, but to the human life, that is a lot of time wasted. Eight years is a lot of time wasted continuing to disregard, disobey, and ignore God. So they're underneath this oppression. This is... <laughs> but just because that they had forgotten about God doesn't mean that God has forgotten about them. Eight years is, is like a blimp. But over and over and over again, this incredible grace-filled God has a way of sending a ding. Things that were in intended to get our attention. So there are some things that I believe that most of the time, and I, I want you to hear this, most of the time, what I believe is that God doesn't cause the things a lot of times you heard last week is that um, a lot of times we were going that direction anyway because of the direction that, uh, that we're going we're going to run into that type of stuff but he can definitely use that type of thing and so uh, this is kind of how it plays, plays out in our lives it plays out like this the guy plays the fool starts fudging on his integrity and ends up losing a job and creates financial ruins and finds himself in a pit and if he, if he or she has ears to hear ding you need to start crying out to me did you get that? did you forget about me? for some people I forgot, teach, I forgot about teaching my kids about God you know <laughs> And now that they're a teenager, they want to do something else on Sunday morning, and I can't stop them. It's gotten out of control. You know, I dedicated my children here at this altar. I heard the ritual where I, where, where I agreed and the church had, had, had prophesied over those kids where they said, you know, direct their youthful mind to their scriptures and their feet to the sanctuary, and I got permissive. I got permissive and I stopped doing that with my children. And now I'm in a bad way. And God wants to use that situation as a bing. 
So I've been in ministry for a long time. I know that some of you, you're looking at me and you're, well, I'm losing a lot of hair, okay? So that means that I've been in ministry a long time, okay? Um, I, silly thing that, that uh, we've been doing some essential oil treatments on my hair, hoping that maybe it started growing back. And I said, Cassandra, you know, I just don't think that it's working. So I, I take a, a comb and I part it down the middle and part it to the side and just saying, look at all that hair that's gone. <laughs> Um, I find it funny. I can I can laugh about it. Um, some of you might think you're you're saddened for me, um, but anyway, um, been in ministry long enough where I've heard story after story after story of people that find themselves in a bad way like that, and they get bitter about it. They say, "God, where are you at?" How come you're not here for me now? <laughs> the truth of it is, is that that's the direction that they were going all along. And they find themselves in a bad way. I have to be honest with you, and, and maybe this is probably the most important question. We haven't read our scripture yet, and I know that you're kind of on your edge of your seat saying, is this really what's happening? Um, but do you believe that God wanted his people who were called by his name to live under oppression by an enemy army that were infiltrated and they started listening to these voices and being influenced by that? Do you really truly believe that God wanted, it, that was his, his want for them, his will for them? I just, I don't, I don't believe that's the God that we serve. I don't believe that God wants oppression to happen to any of us. That things would have been a little bit differently, that maybe they didn't even end up being in the Bible, <laughs> but if they would have just listened to God, if they just would have obeyed Him, if they would have remembered Him, it happened because... God's people forgot about Him. So have you ever forgotten about God? Have you done your own thing, been your own boss, failed His commandments? Maybe you've had a moment like that. Maybe you've had a day like that. Maybe you had a year like that. Maybe you, and I sure hope that you haven't had eight years like that. Even whenever we have forgotten about God, I promise you, I promise you, God has not forgotten about you. Even that if today you find your pl yourself in a place like that, you find yourself in a place that, that God never intended on you to be, but you found yourself in that dark place in which that, that you've been running away from God, He knows how to hear your cry even in the midst of those places. He knows how to find you in the midst of those places that you never intended on being, and that's the kind of God that we have. Someone in this scripture finally heard the bing and it created a boom as a reminder hey we need to cry out to God so let's read it Judges chapter 3 Judges chapter 3 Starting with verse 1. These are the nations that the Lord left to test all those Israelites who had no, who had no first-hand knowledge of the wars of Canaan. They survive only to teach war to the generations of Israelite who had no first-hand knowledge of the earlier wars. The five rulers of the Philistines and all the Canaanites, the Sidonites, the Hivites who have lived in the highlands of Lebanon from the Mount of Baal Hermon and Lebo Hamath. They were there to test for Israel, to find out whether that they could obey the Lord's command which he had made to their ancestors through Moses. So the Israelites lived among the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, and all those ites. But the Israelites intermarried with them and served their gods. 
Verse 7, the Israelites did things that the Lord saw as evil, and they forgot the Lord their God. They served the Baals with the Asherahs. With the Lord became angry with Israel and gave them over to King Cushanrenthem of Aram near Naharam. The Israelites served Cushan Reshethem eight years. But then they cried out to the Lord. So the Lord raised up a deliverer for Israelites. Othanel, Kenaz's son, Caleb's younger brother, who rescued them. Now listen to this. The Lord's spirit was on Othanel, and he led Israel. When he marched out for war, the Lord handed over Aram's king, Cushan Rathan, Rush, Rush Thantham, Othnel overpowered Cushnan Rathamnam. <laughs> and the land was peaceful for 40 years until Othnel, Kenaz's son, died. Heavenly Father, I pray that you help us today. I pray that uh, you give us eyes to see. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Finally, someone heard the beam that resulted in a boom that caused them to finally cry out to God. And God responded by folding his arms and looking at them and said, you guys got, you, you got yourself in this mess. You guys get yourself out. Anybody going to disagree with what that's what he said? That's not what he said, did it? He said, absolutely, thank you for crying out to me. <laughs> I, I can deliver. So he raised up Othnel. And he comes from good stock. Othniel comes from really good stock. You want to know why? You know who his aunt, uncle was? Caleb. And Caleb, Caleb, Caleb was the man. You want to know how I know that he, why, why that I can gauge Caleb as the man? Because at the, at the great ripe old age of 85, he was still leading armies. He was still kicking rear end and taking names. 85 years old, Caleb was. He's the man. So he comes from good stock. He was a man that, that, was, that was listening. He had his ear tuned to God. So he comes from, from good stock. And here's another thing. You want to know why that Othnel was so victorious? It's because there's a verse in here where he says, the spirit of God came upon him. And the Spirit of God will enable you and enables me to do things that I am incapable of doing. It's God's gift to you and I. That even whenever we think of the impossible, that we've got God's Spirit that can help us overcome. The things that we could have never done unless God was on us, in us, working through us. And that's what happened here. He raised him up. He goes to the king of Aram. And king of Aram, you know, he's seeing this uprising, this army that is happening here. And you would think, I would think, I'm just spitballing here, that Aram's saying, you know, they've lived underneath my thumb for eight years. What are they going to do? I mean, seriously. But there's an X factor that is happening here. <laughs> they've cried out to God. They've got a leader that is filled with the Holy Spirit. You know what they end up doing? They kicked booty. They took names. <laughs> and God is victorious. The nation of Israel, after that, experienced 40 years of peace as long as Othniel was alive. And Othniel would never let them forget it. You want to know what I, there's not a lot that we, because there's only three verses that talk about Othniel. You want to know what I believe about Othniel? In that 40 years that we don't get it, I believe that there is probably a time, maybe two, three, 15 years after this has happened, that maybe that there would become generations that would come in and they said, you know what, this God that, that, that this other person is serving, maybe that that would, maybe that'd be okay if we started serving that God and Othniel would say, hey, listen up, <laughs> remember where we were? Whenever we started doing that, whenever we started forgetting about God and becoming permissive, don't you do that. Don't you do that. And Othniel would not let them forget the God that delivered them. As long as Othniel lived, the people remember. And I believe as believers of Jesus Christ, 
I'm just going to finish with this, okay? I believe as believers in Jesus Christ, this is what I believe. The ultimate deliverer has already come. He lives amongst us through his Holy Spirit. He's already raised up the great deliverer that is here at your disposal. I don't know if that sends chills down your spine like it did whenever I spoke it. I've been preparing this all week long. I don't know how that that lands, like it just landed upon me. The Deliverer is here. The Deliverer has come. And he's given us the capability to overcome even whenever we have forgotten about him. He has not left you. He has not forsaken you. If you feel like that you're in that, it's because somebody else has moved. It's become, it, it might be because of us, because of our decision and the path that we've been going. But there is no pathway too far where God cannot hear your call and your cry out to him wherever that you are right now. God has raised up a deliverer already and we follow him. And the cross of Jesus Christ that is at the front, forefront of our sanctuary serves as a reminder that our deliverer has come. He is the king of majesty. He is the one that has come. Because of the cross, it serves as a reminder that even though that we have played the fool and forgot about him, that Christ still died for us. We sometimes finish out services surrounding a table for us to remember him whenever we take of his communion. But tonight, to, today, this morning, what I'd like to do is just finish out in worship. Is that okay? And I'm going to ask the band to come up and we're going to, we're going to worship the deliverer. Uh, his name is Jesus. He is the king of glory. He is the Lord of all. And maybe it gives you an opportunity that whenever you re receive God's word, that gives you an opportunity to respond in that manner. Maybe you want to cry out to him in whatever manner. Maybe you want to take somebody by the hand and say, you know, would you come down and pray with me? Would you go back to our, our prayer room back there in the back and pray with me and just help me cry out to God? Because I believe that that's what the community of faith does. So I believe that we surround each other, that this is a safe place that we can, that you can find even in the midst of you, whatever place that you found yourself that you've forgotten about God, that you can still cry out to him. You can still find him and he can still respond because he is our deliverer. Is this King of glory that pursues me with his love and haunts me with each hearing of his softly spoken words? My conscience a reminder of forgiveness that I need. Who is this King of glory who offers it to me? Who is this King of angels? Oh, blessed peace of peace, revealing things of heaven and all its mystery. My spirit ever longing for his grace in which to stand. Who is this King of glory, Son of God and Son of Man? His name is Jesus, precious Jesus. Lord Almighty, King of my heart, the King of glory. Who is this King of glory? With strength and majesty, 
and wisdom beyond measure the gracious king of kings the lord of earth and heaven the creator of all things he is a king of glory is everything to me his name is jesus precious jesus lord almighty the king of my heart the king of glory his name is jesus precious Lord Almighty, the King of my heart, the King of glory. Lord Almighty, the King of my heart, the King of glory. Lord Almighty, the King of my heart, the King of glory. Lord, we thank you so much that you are the King of glory, that you've given us the name that is above all names, our deliverer, and that you've raised him up in the midst of us crying out to him, Lord. I pray that we would always remember that, that it would be at the forefront of our minds, Lord, and that you would deliver us, God. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Be sure you tell a few people that, that uh, you're glad they're in church this morning. Thank mm -hmm. you.